everyone, good morning. We are on our way to pre-release Oath of the Gatewatch number one. This is going to be a vlog. We decided to take you guys along with us because we're going to two pre-releases. Yep. So we're doing a uh, two at a giant, and then, um, and then later we'll be doing a normal sealed event with the Magic Club. Yeah, in the evening. And so we are on our way now in the suburban with all our friends. Um, they all went to a midnight release, so some of them are crashed. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. Be nice. <laughs> Wake up. Anyways, so um, yeah, we'll um, we'll just be doing a couple of video blips. Uh, we're probably not going to be filming our actual games. Sorry, it's a very bouncy here. We're not going to be filming our actual games. We're just going to be filming our experience and uh, probably talking about it a little bit later. But yeah. Yeah. See ya. We'll see ya. All right, we're opening up our packs. Let's see what we get. For a promo, I got a promo. Eldrazi Obligator. Obligator. What's your promo? And. Seagate wreckage. Sweet. Okay. Alright, well there we go. Um, we're gonna start opening these packs. I got a and low. You wanna open the packs for the camera? Or? Sure. Alright. Go. Nope. We're we're good. Good. Okay, cool. Got a little oath thingy which we can read later. Building your sealed deck is a little advice. Are we, are we, what are we open? Foil waste! Oh, that's so sweet! A foil waste! Nice! Okay. Yeah, I got a foil wasteland. Sylvan Advocate for my first time. Foil forest and a annual eternal pilgrim. This is really noisy in here. Yeah, it is. It's way yeah, noisy. It uh, okay. Your rare? Is, oh, I got a foil. Cinder Hellion. That's, that's just a good card. That's a good card. <gasps> Inverter of Truth is Ooh, your mythic. Ooh, got a mythic Eldrazi. Oh, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's open up these decently quick so we can uh, start deck building. I have blue. Oops, we, have we, we don't usually uh, open packs like this. Yeah, yeah. Harvester what? Troll? Wow, Harvester like troll. I've gotten two foils and we've, we've gotten two packs. Three foils and three packs. Well, hold on, maybe a fourth. Shoot, this could be the Origins like that pack all over again. Yeah. <gasps> Linval! Yeah, yeah. Linvala the Preserver. Remorseless oh. punishment. The two, two packs, two mythics. I'm happy with this. <laughs> All right. And I also got a mythic from my. Um, wait, no, did I? No, I didn't. I just got. I just got. A, I just got a land. All right. Let's see. Foil waste. I wonder if that's ah, worth anything. Crush of tentacles. No. Nice. Oh my gosh. Uh, Tyrant of Valakut. That's all right. Bad, it's a good, it's, it's a great Strong surge card. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Right, black, white, and blue. Okay. Looks like one of us should go maybe blue, red, surge. I think so. I think we're actually getting the stuff for blue, red, surge. Yeah, and I mean, it's val it's more valid than oh, this. Let's see. That's right. a foil. <gasps> you, you didn't you see what? Foil you got a foil. <laughs> you got a foil mean in den. Okay, I got a foil, uh, void grafter. That's it, that's... And then oh, an nice. Oath of Gideon. Oath of Gideon too. Wow, jeez, this is actually, this is, already this is so much better than last year. Yeah, now we got our BFZ. BFZ. And just, you know, just, we'll just pop an expedition or two and, and yeah. we're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, an island and uh, a dust stalker. I wanted that so bad. Dust stalker, which is good. A, a curl and hell kite. Okay, cool, cool. Got a sylvan scrying too, so that'll be good. This is so much fun. <laughs> Let's start with a brutal expulsion. Oh, that's gonna be great for surge. Oh, I need another hydrogen. And a smoldering marsh. Want a breaker of armies, babe? Oh my god. Ah. Nice. All right, so we're gonna start building our deck, uh, playing right. our games, and we'll see you guys later. Yep. Bye. Hey guys, so um, we're gonna talk about our deck in a little bit, but for right now, we're just gonna crack open the prize packs. We we went uh, three and one. Three and one, and uh, we got fourth place, and that earned us two packs each. So let's crack. Crack one at a time, or are we just that impatient? Let's, <laughs> Let's just bone. <laughs> We're just cracking all of these. It. Let's do it. Okay. All right. What'd you get? What'd you get? So back. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate doing it this way, but we, we're crunched for time. Yeah. Hey. A cr crush of tentacles. Because you know we could use it with another one of those. Yeah. Uh, expedite. Blah blah. blah. Uh, we got a waste, which is nice. Seer's lantern, that's cool. Oblivion strike, which is great. Mind melter, cool. Havoc sower and uh, Moody's vanguard, a cohort dude. Not bad. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, next one. That was the Jace one. <laughs> All right, so we're headed out now. Okay. 
Oh, you got Eileen. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Oh, I got one. Alright, so. Cool, cool. Sky Scour. I, I, I like this creature. It's great. Yeah. Um, okay. Unknown Chores. Yeah, I love this artwork for yeah. Unknown Chores. Um, make a stand. Flyer Drone. That's a nice one. Uh, yeah. Soothsayer and Dread Defiler. Oh. Sweet. Pretty sweet. Good good cards, good packs. Um, and we're off to our next one, like right now. Yeah. See ya. Hey guys. Hey. So this is the day after the... The pre-release? The day after, the evening after the pre-release. Um, unfortunately we kind of, it was really busy going from one pre-release to the other, so we didn't get filming on the second pre-release, um, but, yeah, I guess that just shows that you probably shouldn't go to two pre-releases when one is two hour drive away from the other. Yeah, so. yeah, but it's what we had considering that we don't have any local, local game stores. Yeah, essentially one is an hour south, the other one is an hour north, and so we, we went to all, uh, to, to both of them, so... We kind of forgot to film um, most of the drive. We were either hanging out with friends or just talking about our pre-release experience mm -hmm. and getting psyched up for the next one. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a, it was a very very fun filled day. I yes, have to it say. was. It was it was exhausting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, so uh, let's kind of talk about it in chronological order because yeah. that's probably the yeah. best way to do it. So the first event, which you saw a little bit of footage of earlier, um, is we we went to a two-headed giant event. At Gone Rogue, Rogue Gaming, which is owned by the guy who is the Rogue Deck Builder. Yeah, the Rogue Deck Builder uh, made it. It's in Richfield. Yes. Um, and it's a kind of a new store, but it was a it was a lot of fun. Um, we were we were one of thirty six players, so eighteen teams. Yes. Um, and we got fourth place. We got fourth place, which we're super pumped about, um, mm -hmm. mainly because. We've had some difficulty with Two-Headed Giant in the past. Yes, this is our third Two-Headed Giant event. Yeah, and, well, it's a whole other video if we wanted to talk about that, but let's just say we were not doing very well the first couple of times we did Two-Headed Giant together. Mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't work out, but this time, I think we were prepared. I think that um, we really worked well together, much better than we have had in the previous mm -hmm. um, times, and uh, it was really enjoyable, and it was difficult, but... Yeah. You had the blue and red surge deck. Right. And I had the black and green beatdown deck. We just found that that was the best thing. I had a ton of surge cards. Yes. A ton of them. Like, almost every instant and sorcery you had was surge, and, and most of your creatures as well. Yeah, I, uh, it, was, it was really, really great. Uh, it was a little bit temperamental. <laughs> I'll say uh, sometimes if I just didn't get a creature, I couldn't do too much. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, um, we, went, we went three and one. Yeah, we went three and run on the day. Um, we lost one, which I think the person that we lost to ended up getting second place. Yeah. Um, so that's that's not nothing. Um, but uh, it was really good. Uh, so when we were open up opening up the packs, uh, we laid them all out by color, and we went through, as a couple, each color individually. Yeah, even though we actually pulled a Linvala the Prevailer. Yes, we did. Neither of us ran white because we didn't have enough white support for what we needed to do. I actually sh thought that we should have. At first, because, like, I had this idea of one deck goes two colors, the other deck just takes everything else. I really feel like the way we built our deck so effectively was going through each individual color, color by color. Yeah, um, unfortunately that took up quite a bit of our time. Yes, uh, I remember once we had, once we had gone through our, our colors and we realized, okay, I got a lot of good, um, is it colored surge stuff. surge stuff, and you had just a lot of... Just, we had a lot of good black removal and good green beats. Also, you had a playset of... Of Scion Summoner. Of, si of Scion Summoner, right. Um, and so, once we had decided that, like, the second we had said, Okay, I will go Surge, you will go Gugari Beats. And, and, and we just hear, Five minutes! We're like, Oh! <laughs> we start laying down the cards. And, um, and yeah, uh, it was, it was really, really great. And I feel and like... And they did give us a little bit more time. Yeah, they did give us a, a, a lot more time. And I think doing sealed takes a long time, but also doing sealed with a partner takes yeah. a huge yeah. amount of time. I feel like considering that we were able to do both a two-headed giant event and a sealed event, it was very 
apparent what the what the big differences are and it takes so much longer to build a two-headed giant deck as opposed to your own sealed deck because Absolutely. you have to communicate with the person instead of make all the decisions in your head and i feel like that's one of the reasons why we were so successful is because we went through every single card as a couple we also made the decisions as a couple yes um whereas previously what we did is we each opened up our sealed pools together and we kind of were already having some ideas and so when we tried to mash these two ideas from our two sealed pools together it was it, it was, was bad. Messy. Yeah. And so I honestly recommend anybody who's doing uh, Two Headed Giant in the future to just take the time and just separate all the colors and then just go through first the colors individually, then multicolors, mm -hmm. and then determine who's going to get the wastelands, who's going to get the, the artifacts, who's going to get yeah. these things. Another thing I would recommend for um, Two Headed Giant is make sure that you and your partner are compatible. Um, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that you and your you and your partner are friends and have not necessarily like similar play styles, but know how to communicate with each other. Mm, because I can see that. Um, you you could have run into a situation where you just aren't able to uh, talk at all, and it gets really bad. Um, well, not necessarily like you won't be able to communicate correctly and some person might target like the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah, I saw that. Um, we were able to play with some friends and also some other people and there are so many times where you just be like, okay, I target this thing. Wait, wait, why did you do that? You know, like, yeah. like you need to be very compatible. I agree with you. And, and, and most of the things that we did, it's just like, okay, so I'm going to cast this first and then, and then Than's going to cast the surge thing. Yeah. It made the decisions and what we were going to do very easy. It was like, it was almost like a dance if you will. <laughs> <laughs> she loves dancing. <laughs> um, but no, I agree with you. I really, really do. Because I feel like previous pre-releases, we were both, like, we, we were on the same team, of course, and we made decisions as a team, but we both just had two decks and we were just playing each other. As opposed, uh, as opposed to this, which is we really made these decks to complement each other. Yes. And to exemplify that, this is something that, that we just did for fun. Uh, I think this was at the end of round two. Round three. Or round three, yeah. And and we both modified our decks, and, uh, and we're like, well, we want, we have some time. Let let's just play each other. And so <laughs> I played her, and I opened up my grip, and I got three lands and three cards with surge, and all of them cost like four or five mana but they cost like two mana and three mana for Surge. Mm -hmm. And I just got curb stomped because all my all my cards were Surge and all of it relied on her to cast the spells. Once she cast the spells, I was tearing it up with Surge. Yeah. And the only card, I, I was actually looking through the deck today, and the only card I had, the only cards I had in the deck that didn't have Surge... Were things like Slip Through Space yeah. to let you draw a card. Which not only was, was a draw card enabler, but it was also a one mana spell that, that would enable surge <laughs> exactly and so it was just fantastic like we really complimented each other well we really took the time to look at our pools together make those decisions and then do them and i think previously when we had do, done two edge giant i uh specifically one time i had just became in love with this combination of cards and i built the deck to do that the problem was is that i didn't always get that i was trying to make my combo go off um, which was just like a flyer with with some with some prowess stuff prowess and 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 um, and like you know uh, anthem effects and, and I was I was trying to hold hold off with my green white deck yeah to... and it was it was just so bad also that was the time of dragons of Tarkir so he had the Ojatai colors and I had the Dromoka colors and we didn't share each other's white yeah and so that yeah there's a lot of problems but I feel like this time we've conquered it I feel great we got fourth place we both got two packs a piece. Which um, we opened on camera. Yeah, which 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 you saw. Those were the prize packs. Um, really happy about the Eilie. Yeah, yeah, she's really happy about the Eilie. But yeah, so and and we were really really happy on that. And with that, we um, left um, right after that video was ended, and we just went to our other pre-release. That one was an hour up from where our college is. Yeah. And yeah. so um, we had like literally no time to like pit stop. It was basically a pit stop at our house to try and like pick up everything and pack. Yeah, basically we just we just had no time, we just went. Um, and uh, one of the things that we were trying to do is make sure we had enough people um, to, to go to Gameland World. And it turns out that we had 18 people total from the club who all packed into two Suburbans and one car and we just drove everyone down 
and uh, we just raided the store, and I didn't expect that to happen at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I actually ended up calling the store owner, and I just said, um, we've got like 18 people coming, and he's like, oh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> and so we were actually, he actually transferred us to another store so they could consolidate the rest of the um, pre-release packs that they had so they would have enough for us. Yes. Um, but it yes. was great. There over... were there were a few people that weren't part of the club, but, but I would for say the most part it was just us. Well over half yes. of, the, uh, uh, of the people at this event were people from our club. So we got to play with each other a lot. It was a lot of fun. But we actually both did really well. I Technically, we were, we were matched with our record, but the computer put us at... I was at 6th, she was at 7th. So we basically top hated, which was fantastic. Yeah, and we both got the same amount of packs. Got four uh, packs. Four each. Yep. Let's go through our deck. So, Julie, talk, tell me about your deck. Okay, so um, my deck was Blue Black Eldrazi. Oh, what a surprise! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and I had three Sky Scours, which were a 1-2 with flying that whenever I cast a colorless spell, um, it... Um, it got plus one plus oh. Yep. And uh, all of my spells w were devoid or colorless, with the exception of like two, and that was like a sweep away mm -hmm. and um, some other like removal spell. Yeah. Because I didn't get a ton of black removal, mm. but the the three sky scours was just too good to pass up. Yeah. Originally, I was going Grixis, and I ended up losing that round because I was splashing red for Fall of the Titans, and um, okay. I also got a Kozilek Sentinel, which has the same ability of, of beefing up with colorless. Yeah. And so I just had to cut that, and I won every single game after that. Every single game? or Every, every single... single game. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, the reason why I was, I was being sarcastic there is that um, we actually noticed that a lot of uh, especially in, in, in Sealed, a lot of people were just running blue-black. Yeah. Um, and this is something that Wedge from the Mana Source talked about, mm -hmm. about how, you know, like, it just seems that blue and black are really good. And here's also another interesting thing. Uh, when, when it comes to my deck, uh, I ended up going the same exact colors, the same exact mm -hmm. route, but I had a lot of allies. Problem is, is I had a couple cohort things, and I had no rally at all. It was just a bunch of allies, mm -hmm. and as much as I wanted to go allies, and I actually got my, you know, my promo was the was the ally with cohort, which is I guess is all right, mm -hmm. and I, I actually initially built a mono white deck, I think splashing blue for some counter spells, mm -hmm. um, or something like that, and I ended up uh, I ended up going just white allies, and it just it didn't get there. Like I, I, I well actually I, I I didn't even use that deck at all. I built it, took one look at it, shuffled it up and played it, and I'm just like. This is really terrible. And I decided to sod the quest on that and just take all my blue-black stuff, mm -hmm. which were all right. And um, even though I didn't have three of those flyers that you had, I only had one, that one put in so much work. I can only imagine having two of them and just being like, okay, um, uh, uh, you know. Play a colorless spell, swing in for four. Yeah, six. it was so bad. Like, just wrecking their face. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can only imagine how good that was. And it, and, it, and it just proves that even though I didn't pull a lot of really good cards mm -hmm. that would go into that deck, I pulled enough to make it work. And I just, yeah. I just feel that blue-black was just so overpowered uh, yeah. in that scenario. Um, um, it just In just that whole setting, really. Yeah, I think... Um, I think that three of the four decks that I played were blue-black. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also the people who did well... Like, I, you know, as you started winning and as I started winning as well, you start playing against people and you realize that all the good players are playing blue-black and all yeah. the mediocre players are like, hey, allies even, are cool. Even though I only, like, I had no seven converted mana cost or higher Eldrazi, I still went blue-black. Yeah. Because those three uh, Sky Scours were so good. Yeah. And so um, I honestly feel like, I mean, I know this is probably, this is going to be posted a little bit late, so this, we can't really use this for, for help, but just, I, I just... I feel like in a, in a sealed setting, probably in drafted as well, mm -hmm. allies don't even bother. Like it's just all all, all you wanted to be doing is this the blue black deck. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, that's something I definitely noticed. And uh, but still, because we actually top eight, we both got four packs apiece. Yeah. Um, which was fantastic. And again, we haven't opened all those up. We're probably gonna pack wars with some friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just it was a lot of fun. It was very tiring because yeah. we were up from six o'clock in the morning to make breakfast for all our friends, and then we got home at one. 
Yes. I want to say. We got home at 1.30 in the morning. It was it was pretty bad. Um, yeah. So, um, but it was actually really worth it. Um, one of the things that Julie and I were talking about is that if we added up all the packs that we got, mm -hmm. we got a booster box between the two of us. Like, yes. I got 18 packs, including all the stuff in my pre-release and all the prize packs. She did the same. We basically just got a booster packs. Booster and, box. And considering, like, the price we purchased, it's less than $100. Yeah, so, like, you know, and so we were really able to, to, yeah. to enjoy that. I, would, um, I, would ne I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing, th try to do three pre-release events, no. but two is excellent. This is our first time doing two. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, no, like, I, I agree with you, because we had, we had some friends who actually went to the midnight pre-release. In addition to those two. In addition to the two. they were not happy by the end of that. <laughs> no, uh, one of them, I actually asked him, uh, you know, I, ta I talked to him, like, hey, how you doing? He's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. I think I'm going to drop the event. I'm like, well, why, man? Like, you, you, you're not playing very well? And he's like, well, I just, I got a headache, and I'm just not feeling it. And, and, yeah. and so, they were just dead by the end of it. Um, yeah. So, so, I don't recommend doing that. However... I still feel like if we if you go to two pre-releases and you do a fair job, you actually can get a lot of good packs, yeah. a lot of yeah. packs for not a lot of investment, just just a lot of, of you know a, a lot of fun times. And I feel like you know, and I feel like we're getting our, our money's worth with the experience of playing with people as well. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's one of the things that I love about Magic is that it's not just about the cards or the money or the gameplay. It really is about the social aspect of the game. And so we got to meet a ton of really cool people. We got to play with our friends and road trip with our friends, which was mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I it was. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. It was a lot that. of fun. We were able to have nice magic-related conversations, mm -hmm. and it was really sweet. It was. It was. And now we have a ton of packs that we have to sort out. I mean, this, sorry, the, the cards that I'm playing with, these are just the tokens that we've picked up. Like, <laughs> from all the packs. Which, yeah. on a side note, I feel like I'm actually getting more tokens than tip cards. Yeah. In the most recent packs. Which, Which I'm, is not a problem. It's not a problem at all. I love tokens. Uh, and if it gets to the point where they don't ever have ad cards and they just have tokens... And just have ad cards on the back, that would not be a problem. That would not be a problem, because if, if we end up getting, like, 50 Eldrazi Scions, we'll just use these to, you know, as proxies for our decks or our cubes and stuff like that. But even so, I like how they're including more of them in there. We just had a really enjoyable time Yeah, it was yesterday. a wonderful event. Uh, post in the comments how your pre-release event happened, or... Yeah any crazy polls you guys did whatever you want to whatever you want to say challenge to the to, to the comment section one of our friends opened up a a expedition wasteland see if you can top that yeah um but <laughs> in all seriousness we had a lot of fun uh she yeah. got she got a shiny legendary card that she wanted i got linvala um i she, got a thought not seer yeah um, like everybody got some really really cool stuff and when you go to two pre-releases and you, essentially we opened a booster box mm -hmm. like we got a lot of great stuff yeah and it so, was wonderful uh, it was absolutely wonderful yeah basically uh so we're gonna go enjoy our spoils and <laughs> and uh, wishing you guys hopefully you guys had a great pre-release um again comment we love to hear from it um because just it's fun to share share what we what Yes we did. it is. Yes it is. But yeah, we gotta go. We're the magic couple and we'll see you later. See ya!